Chiefs Kingdom ACU crew, we're back with another live podcast for that ass. Steve, a What's lot up? of a lot of news out of Chiefs Kingdom this week. A lot of news, but a lot of like um a lot of like non news expected. Yeah, news but non news, right? Yeah, I mean it's pretty uh expected stuff, I guess. Well, but I, I mean there's the Rasheed Rice news wasn't expected. That was a wild mm. way to go to sleep on Saturday night. Yeah, that was pretty weird. Like, no one was expecting it, but it's funny how all this stuff came out after the fact where it's like, oh, well, he had concerns before the draft, and that's why he fell around, too. It's like no one ever heard about any of that until now. They hid that pretty well. Uh, True. I, I could have swore I remember something about character issues back in the draft process, but it wasn't like nothing that came to the forefront. Like, nobody talked right. about well, it. Well, according to Adam Schefter, it was like a, a, a known thing that okay. he surrounds himself with terrible people. And he had character issues, and for that's some why reason I thought you were going to say to. terrorist <laughs> instead of terrible <laughs> people. Uh, they, hey, they know how to terrorize a career. Okay, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll talk about that in a minute because uh, we kind of held off talking about the Rasheed Rice thing because we wanted some facts to come out. A lot of people give us a lot of heat over that. Like it was crazy that we just didn't jump to conclusions right off the rip. Right. Even if you're right or wrong, it's like what's what's the point of like being that guy or like those people that just want to like jump out and say stuff. It's like, I didn't get anything out of it. If I come out and I'm right or wrong about it, you know what I'm trying to right. say? You just got to give people a chance to play that out, but we'll talk about that in a minute, but let's kick it off with uh because of the Rasheed rice. We have this in the news. Now uh, bleacher report reports that NFL rumors say Tyler Boyd is now linked to the chiefs, 49ers, dolphins, and other teams in 2024 free agency, Steve. And they said Boyd would be a solid addition for any team in need of some depth out wide. He recorded back-to-back 1,000-plus yard seasons in 18 and 19 and is coming off a 2023 season in which he caught 67 passes for 667 yards and two touchdowns in 17 games. The Chiefs added Marquise Hollywood Brown this offseason to pair alongside Watson, Rice, and more. But Boyd would be certainly an upgrade over Watson. Steve, do you think uh hey, do you think you do you like the Tyler Boyd uh smoke? And do you think he's an upgrade over Justin Watson? Never been a huge fan of getting Tyler Boyd. Uh not for the price that uh he was where well, they were projecting as far, far as like spot rack goes. I think they were had him around the ten million dollar mark, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but was never a huge fan of Tyler Boyd. Uh I don't think he moved the needle or anything like that, but like it just really depends, right? I mean, if Rasheed Rice is really going to miss a lot of time, which we have no idea about, I'm kind of assuming he's only going to miss a few games, th- then maybe. Uh, is he an upgrade over Watson? That's questionable, too. I would say yes, but at the same time, it's like Watson already knows the offense. He's already comfortable with Mahomes. Uh, there's lots of different ways to look at it. So it was $8.7 million. Okay. Yeah, 8.7. Well, like, here's my hey, thing. That's close Boyd. enough to 10. Close yeah. enough. <clears throat> Here's my thing with Boyd. Like we've talked about with the receivers right now, how many more can they draft or sign before it becomes an issue on who we put on the top, you know, on the roster? Mm-hmm. Andy Reid's probably going to hold six on the roster this year. It's usually five. We have the no fullback. I don't think we're doing seven again. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, we, we're already looking at, you know, Rasheed Rice and Hollywood Brown as the obvious top two. And then you're looking at Sky Moore, Kadarius Tony. Uh, you got Justin Watson, uh, Justin Ross. There's You're all kinds going of going to draft one. This is too deep of a wide receiver class to not draft one. Right. So my, my, my I guess, okay, to answer your question, I'm not a f- big, huge fan of getting Tyler Boyd. I don't think Tyler Boyd's great or anything like that, but I think he would be a decent signing if you could get him for cheap. And I mean, it would, by, by all means, it would be a better deal than what they gave to Rasheed, or uh, I'm sorry, MVS. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> you can't go wrong there as long as you don't sign another MVS for $12 million a year. Right. I feel like Tyler Boyd only becomes a thing in KC. Uh, because, by the way, he's going to be almost 30 years old. He's been in the league for seven years. Uh, I, I looked yesterday, and I'll bring this up for you so you can just see it and read it right along with me. If you look at his seasons through PFF and, and his grading and everything, in 2017 – or 2018, he had 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns. In 2019, he had 1,000 yards and five touchdowns. And then he's just been on a decline every year, steady decline for five straight years. In 2020, 
840 yards, four touchdowns. 2021, 820 yards, five touchdowns. 2022, 760 yards, five touchdowns. Last year, 667 yards, two touchdowns. He just keeps going down and down and down and down, which is, that's what receivers do. And again, it, yeah, he fights for targets over there. But I remember when um, there was a lot of injuries going on in Cincinnati. And do you remember when they were like, well, Tyler Boyd gets to prove himself as a number one wideout. And boy, that was a crap right. show for about seven or eight weeks. I think the first or second week of doing that, he looked okay. And everybody was like, oh, he's going to prove himself. And then once teams got that on film, they destroyed him. I think he's a decent complimentary piece for his age and everything. I think he only considers KC if he don't get a big like two, three-year deal from somebody. Because technically, the Chiefs aren't going to give him no more than a one-year deal. It's going to be that one-year prove-it deal because you didn't get it from nobody else. Right. Am I comfortable for what Brett Veach offers? We know that he takes market value. So 8.7, we'll just say nine. And he offers you a third. So he's probably offered Tyler Boyd two and a half to $3 million. And Tyler Boyd's probably like, well, I probably just won't take that then. And that's probably what it is. And if he does sign, that's what I, what I suggest. But I don't think he's that much of an upgrade over Justin Watson. I know that probably going to cause some riots, you know, in the streets. Well, you but- have to look at it from a, a bunch of different ways, like I was saying. I mean, Watson's already comfortable. Watson already knows the offense. Right, and he's already here. By the time Boyd yeah. gets through the one year, he's going to be halfway, two-thirds, all the way through the season before Mahomes and him get on the same page, more than likely. So right. I don't love the signing. Is it necessary because of Rasheed Rice? I guess we can touch on that just a little bit, Steve. So here's what we know about Rasheed Rice. Here's what we know. He's a he slap nuts. Well, yeah, he, he's a, a big slap nuts. <laughs> first and foremost. But what we do know is that he did own the Corvette and he was renting the Porsche SUV. He's a Lamborghini. The Lamborghini, my bad. Um, he, he admitted to the people he wrote them and said he was part of an accident. He'll pay for the Lamborghini. So he admitted to being at the accident. Uh, we don't know if he was driving or not. They said that he was supposed to be the only driver. So when I go register for a car and I go on vacation or whatever, Technically, I'm supposed to be the only person unless I put someone else on it. That doesn't always mean people abide by those rules. I'll still drive it. Right. There, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so technically, we still don't know if he drove it or not. Maybe he thought he had to cop up to it so he wouldn't get in trouble. I don't know. But the point is, is he was there. He was in an accident. He was renting one. He was registered another one. He come from his mom, I think. Somebody was having like a party. There was probably some sort of drinking involved, which we don't know for sure. That's probably why they fled. That's what everybody's saying to evade DUI, but we don't know that for sure. There's just a lot of things you still don't know, but what we do know is that he was involved. He's admitted to it. He did walk away from the scene without checking on anybody. At the end of the day, guys, everybody's like, this is going to ruin his career. I don't think it ruins his career. Was it a bad lapse in judgment? One billion percent. Is it a little heartless to walk away from an accident when there was a kid involved and everybody else? A billion percent. But at the end of the day, he literally just, he's going to be ticketed for maybe reckless driving and leaving the scene of an accident. And that is two probably misdemeanors that he'll plead down to. And what's the NFL going to do? If he don't have a Chiefs uniform on, he probably gets a smack on the wrist and maybe a two-game suspension. Like an With Alvin a Chiefs Kamara uniforms on, deal. he's... Yeah. Right. With with a Chiefs uniform, he six. may get four to six, and he may be able to to, to knock that down. Right. So who? I just don't think it's like the the end of the world here. I don't think it's the end of his career. Was it a slap nut move? Thousand percent. Should he be held accountable? Billion percent. But I don't think you can just like destroy this dude's whole life over like. Well, here's a, a here's lapse in judgment thing. for a few minutes. Here's the thing. He's a kid. Kids do dumb things. Like we predict, we did dumb things when we were twenty three, right? I get it. But this was a little extreme. Hey, how much more dumb would you have been if you'd had his money in a Lamborghini? Right, but still a little extreme. Like the fact, like what is it going to take for these young kids to realize that they're in a prime position in life? Right, that they don't need to screw it up. They don't need to surround themselves with bums that just want to take advantage of them and use their money and just you know losers basically. And and, and on top of that, it's like. You have no social status you need to meet. You don't have to be anybody. You just, you know, you don't have to look cool. Uh, also, like, when are we going to start valuing human life again? Like, why is it not just a no big deal that you're flying on the interstate or the Dude, whatever it was? It's, it's all it is um, is cars, money, 
and and just right. a, a persona. Like I was saying, you would think like the Henry Ruggs incident would wake up some people, but obviously it didn't. Um, they have to start paying attention. They they it's just ridiculous. Like these kids are crazy for for putting themselves in these situations. But but once again, like I said, kid, uh, does he learn from it? We'll see. It, That's my know. thing. If 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 he learns from it and he goes the rest of his career and we don't have another incident like this, okay. Like that's a blip on his radar. He he determines his own future at this point, right? You yeah. either man up, you take responsibility, which I mean the lawyers are going to lawyer. They're going to plead him down. He's probably going to smack on the wrist. All this stuff. He's going to be out a lot of civil suit, no doubt about that one. He's going to, you know, take a chunk to the pocketbook. But right. other than so, that. So do you think, here, here's the thing, like in the videos that people have released, they're saying they're leaving the scene because there were weapons. A lot of people speculated. And none alcohol, of this has been confirmed. Being, Still right. speculation. A lot of people speculated it might have been alcohol involved. Here's my thing. When the accident happened, I know you don't really think straight when there's an accident. First of all, everything seems like you're in slow motion. You're in fantasy land. Right. And then you're, um, kinda, you're just kind of out of it. You're disassociated a little bit. Right. But do you think Rasheed Rice called somebody? Like uh, even in the even in the uh, video of him just walking away, he had his phone. Like, do you think he called someone, be it uh, uh, a friend, a parent, agent. an agent, somebody, and was like, "Hey, what do I need to do?" Uh, and they advised him get the hell out of there. It's possible. It's possible. And then another thing too, if if I'm his lawyer, let's play devil's advocate. If if you're Rasheed Rice and you're like, "Hey, come to me and help me," or maybe you called me. And I said, get out of there. How can I now spin this? And again, I know you're going to have a thousand people say, well, it doesn't matter what it is legally. He's a horrible human for walking away. Nobody's not saying that. That that he sh They should have totally manned up in that moment and made sure people were good. Yeah. Um, you should have sat around and went through the whole entire process with cops and everything. But don't you think his lawyer is going to come out and be like, well, we advised him to kind of leave the scene because he's a celebrity. We didn't want it to draw a crowd. It would have made stuff harder for cleanup. They'll come up with some stuff. Yeah, they're going to come up with all kinds of stuff. I really believe it. But number one is he was involved, and now we do know that. I don't think there's no getting around it. To the extent, we still don't know if he was driving. We don't know if there was drugs, alcohol, guns in the car. Like, we don't know that. This is all speculation. That will come out. But it didn't do us any good, Steve, to jump on here day one start making a bunch of accusations. Like you wouldn't, we wouldn't have got anything from it. Like nobody was going to come to our house and hand us a trophy for being the guys that are right about it. Because let me tell you something, we're right about a lot of things and everybody just ignores it. That's so right. are they going to be right about this one? No. So it didn't matter. So I don't know why people are kind of like on us. Like we had a few people on Twitter, like, well, what more do you need to know? What? I don't know. Like, it doesn't matter. Like it <laughs> doesn't really matter. doesn't matter. I'm not his no. judge, jury and executioner. Like, I don't care. Right. No one cares what we have to say about it anyway. But no, so with that being out of the way, uh, the wide receiver thing, it's it's getting a little muddied right now. Does that change draft plans? I don't know. That's what I was going to say. Like, okay. You have that going on. You also have Buffalo who traded Stefan Diggs away to the Houston Texans today. So now they're gunning for a wide receiver in the first round, which we already thought. We already thought they would be the person that snags Xavier Leggett early or something like that. Uh, but now do they have different plans? Are they looking at A.D. Mitchell? Like, what are they doing? So there's so many different things going on here. I, the wide receiver thing is just intriguing right now. But I'm with you. I think the tr the Chiefs need to get some sort of wide receiver out of the first two rounds because there's a lot of value in this draft. So I think it, uh, a lot of it probably depends on how the board falls. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people that are just really horned up over Xavier Leggett or, or A.D. Mitchell and some of those kids, like we're not trading up for them. And they're not going to be there. No, no, I'll tell you why we're not trading up for them. I don't think you trade up for a wide receiver in this scenario unless it's one of the big three. It's got to be Harrison, Adunze, or Neighbors, and they have to fall to 10, somewhere around that mark. If you was to see maybe Rome Adunze fall to around 9 or 10 with Chicago, Chicago could dip. But those kids aren't going to drop past 10, 12. It's just not happening. Joe Walt's not getting out of the top 10 to 12. That's not happening. He's too good. So, Steve, we were talking last night. And uh, I won't name who the name was, but it was a big time scout. And he was actually talking to GMs. And we were having this conversation last night. And he was speaking to GMs that were at the bottom of the draft. So GMs between 25 and 32. And he asked them point blank, what's the, 
what's the big thing in this class? And, and I think anybody that puts together draft boards and watches the draft knows wide receivers deep, offensive tackle deep, and then the defense is complete garbage minus the corner room, to be honest. It, there's, a, there's maybe 10 elite defenders in this draft. I don't even know if I'd call them elite. There's 10 good defenders, and then the rest of it's a crapshoot on the defensive side. This is an offensive heavy draft. And basically they said, that you don't really stress over a wide receiver early because why? What have we been saying? It's super deep. They said you can get the same quality once you get to that second tier wide receiver, which is Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell. Um, I don't even know if they put Xavier Leggett in the second tier. They were putting uh, Xavier Worthy. Did I say him? Lad yeah. McConkey. They were putting those guys. Brian Thomas Jr. Those were all guys in the second tier. And they said once you get to that second tier, there's not a whole lot that separates them from the third tier from the fourth tier. Right. So they said you don't freak out over a receiver in round one. You will get your chances in two and three. Yeah. And they said if you want an offensive tackle, you better do it early. And that's yeah. the one thing I heard out of it. Absolutely. Uh, five Bomb from David Miller says, sign Hunter Renfro. Sorry, I almost missed that one. I didn't see it sneak up here. David, what's up, man? Uh, appreciate you, David. I like that one. I would prefer yeah. Hunter Renfro any day over Tyler Boyd. Yeah, especially for the price. Uh, Hunter Renfro is one of the best route runners out there right now. A lot of the pros will tell you that themselves. I think um, Hunter Renfro with a Patrick Mahomes would be just completely nasty. I think he would, could almost it, be like a uh, Julian like, Edelman or something for a Brady. Right? Would it? Wouldn't it? Would it not be the same thing as Justin Watson, just better? Right. He's look. Hunter Renfro is younger than Tyler Boyd. He's he he runs better routes. I think he's faster. He's quicker. There's just things I like about him a little bit. I think he's a little more undersized. I think Tyler Boyd's like 6'2", which is kind of weird. I didn't think Tyler Boyd was that tall. Right. But uh, uh, Hunter Renfro, I think he's sub six foot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Real jock. Uh, the Bengals can't do anything about Boyd right now. He's a free agent. Uh, if you're thinking of T. Higgins, then yes, you're correct. They would never trade T. Higgins. I see a lot of people saying that. The Chiefs need to trade for T. Higgins. I promise you the Bengals would never in a million years trade him to the Chiefs. <laughs> That's the only reason the Bengals franchise tagged him. They knew they couldn't sign yeah. him back. They tagged him because there was rumors he was going to come to the Chiefs in free agency and they wouldn't have it. They wanted to control where he got to go via trade. Yeah. So uh, I've seen a lot of things like that, but T. Higgins is out of the question. It's not happening. There's no way they're trading that guy to us. You'd be better off getting – you'd come over getting Justin Jefferson. <laughs> which is not happening which is not happening you come we're getting that one probably right so yeah i mean it's it's intriguing what'll happen here i don't think they'll freak out because of the rashi rice thing because i'm with you i think it's going to be a little bit of a slap on the wrist for the kid um it, it is what it is that's just how this things get dealt with if it was Look, a domestic he's going to miss six games if he almost kills everybody with a car it's probably two if he has a vacuum cleaner in hand yeah yeah god <laughs> this dude's going to be banned from the league Never um, here's what again. i'll say Here's what I'll say. I think the incident's a bad incident for Rice from a PR standpoint and from a human standpoint. I think a lot of Chiefs Kingdom's going to look at him a little differently, and I think now he's got to earn some trust. From a legal standpoint, it, it's a probably, you know, he probably admits to leaving the scene of an accident, and they probably waive reckless driving. Who knows? Look, everyone knows how this country works. If you yeah. have money, you're fine. If you got money, you're good. He's going to yeah. find a way. So it's just what the league wants to do, basically. And then when it comes to draft plans... Does it really do anything? I don't know. We were going to take a receiver anyway. I think they're still in the position right. to take best player available. And honestly, if you were between a tackle and a wide receiver, you're taking the tackle in round one because you can get better receivers in round two than you can tackles. Tackles right. falls off a cliff after like tackle number 10. Right. They just fall off a cliff. <clears throat> we got a 10 bomb from Scott. He says uh, Hunter Renfro all day, baby. Matriculate three ball or the ball downfield yes. every time. Um, yeah, I, I think so, man. I think he's a better fit than a lot of these other guys. Uh, so if you're going the free agent route, if you if you're trying to get another free agent and draft somebody, then by all means, I think Hunter Renfro is probably who you want to look at because other than that, you're looking at Tyler Boyd, and then of course you got OBJ still out there, which he's going to cost as much or more than Tyler Boyd. Uh, being a little older, being a little injury prone. A lot of people don't like the diva attitude. So, I mean, a lot of people out on OBJ. Tyler Boyd's boring, just blah to me. Uh, Hunter Renfro falls into that category, but I feel like actually he's more exciting. Yeah, I don't Boyd. think Hunter Renfro or Tyler Boyd, in my opinion, move the needle. We always talk talk about that theoretical needle, Steve. Like we're tired of these like mundane wide receivers that can't be playmakers. We're tired of right. it. What's the point to just keep adding to it? If you want I, to keep adding to it, go get a seventh round wide receiver somewhere. 
Yeah, I appreciate the 10, Scott. Uh, but I think that Hunter Renfro, at one point in his career, was a bit of a playmaker. He was. So, uh, yeah. May- maybe that could be revived a little bit. Uh, George, not the Hunter Renfro on the Royals. Not that one. <laughs> hey, yeah, in 2001, Steve, you, uh, he had 103 receptions, uh, 1,038 yards, and nine touchdowns. And by the way, he had a 80.6 PFF grade that season. So he's only two years removed from his best season. Uh, he's kind of went downhill the last two years. But look, the Raiders have kind of been in shambles. They traded away his quarterback that he was used to. You know what I'm saying? Like, they've went through so many changes. Right. I don't think it's a knock on Hunter Renfro. The one thing I will say is that if you go through his career, he's got a decent amount of drops. I mean, I don't know if we want to deal with that one. Yeah. In five years, he's got 16 drops. He had six drops in 2023. That's two more than Kadarius Tony, by the way, and everybody's raging at him. So it's one you think of those that could, things. You think that could have something to do with Aiden O'Connell throwing on the ball? Well, yeah, it, it can. It well, we've said that before. I mean, Patrick Mahomes was to blame on a few of the drops they attributed to Sky Moore and and just different players. The uh, only one that I think just flat out dropped passes last year was Kadarius Tony and uh, MBS. I feel like Kadarius a lot of the Tony other just served that a, bad a lot boy of, up. A lot of the other ones were up for debate. I, granted, there were some one offs like Justin Watson dropped some balls wide open and things like that. Rasheed Rice did the same thing, but I think the problems last year. To me, was Kadarius Tony and MVS. So, uh, Kadarius Tony, I think, had the yips. MVS is what he is. He's a brick hand. You know receiver, what's weird but. is that you you think like Steve. What what do you think Hunter Renfro? He's 5'10", 185. Like, where do you think he would fit in in our offense? That's the weird part. I think he's a little versatile, though. I do think that he can he can move up and down. Do you, he can do whatever. Do you think? Do you consider him more of like a slot guy, like another slot guy? Isn't that every receiver the Chiefs ever have? We'll check this. I, I thought he was just kind of a basic slot guy, right? If you go yeah. back and look through his seasons, the year he played the least amount of slot snaps was 64% of slot snaps. So he had 36% of snaps out wide, and that was 203 snaps out wide and only 360 in the slot, and that was the year he actually put up the biggest numbers was playing on the outside. Yeah. So why does he get just... Uh, pigeonholed to to the uh to the slot it looks like to me like he can go different positions here and maybe that allows you to be more like hey andy and them they do tend to get the slot receivers but they want their slot receivers to do everything that's why slot a uh, sky more struggled right right because he can't really do that hunter looks like he can win on the outside a little bit so maybe this is a decent signing there i never really considered hunter renfro too much i think at first we kind of you know, hum around the idea and, and kicked it around a little right. bit. But. Well, I mean, it's more intriguing to me than, than Tyler Boyd, a hundred percent. But, but moving forward off of the receiver thing, well, I'm sure we'll get back to receiver because it's just very intriguing. What's going to happen there, especially with the way teams are falling now, like Buffalo, definitely going to need somebody Buffalo's in shambles guys. And if that's not hilarious to you, I don't know what it is. Everybody give a round of applause for O'Bean over there in Buffalo. I mean, a hell, hell of a time he's had. Uh, building up the greatest team of all time, only to lose to the Chiefs in the playoffs every year, and then having to completely crash. Oh, and, beanie and, weenie! <laughs> good job, Bean. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about another position at running back. Obviously, we brought in J.K. Dobbins. I believe it was yesterday oh, for yeah. a, for a workout. Uh, Chiefs Kingdom was rock hard horned up Dude, they about were J.K. Passing Dobbins out, passing out left and right over Mike, that one. We, we had brought this this up months ago talking about jk dobbins being an, an option but we didn't like it then and we still don't like it now why because he's injured constantly like if if you want to talk about clyde edwards alaire and how you hate him how he's a bust and how he's always hurt they are the exact same player 100 percent. only jk dobbins is hurt more right look at this here's his injury history in 2016 a leg fibula fracture missed an entire season in 2019 three years later these are non-NFL, so this happened in college, by the way, because a lot of people were saying yesterday, well, the Ravens' medical team sucks. And it's like we had two season-ending injuries in, in college. A medical team isn't going to save you from breaking a leg. Right. So a, a, a high ankle sprain in 2019, and he missed uh, a bunch of games. In 2021, an ACL tear in his knee. He he goes under the knife over that one. Uh 
He also had to do a meniscus trim in that same surgery. He also LCR, LCL tears right there, grade three. Then he comes back in 2021, and, and he's doing a thigh. I think all this happened at the same time. Look at this, August 28, 2021. An ACL, a meniscus, an LCR, and a hamstring tear all in one day. <laughs> in one freaking play, this dude just had his leg ripped off. <laughs> Dude, this guy's a walking crash test dummy. I don't know why people want this. If you want a guy that's going to come in and be somebody that you want for depth, I want him to be available. And I know people's going to say, Steve, Jarek McKinnon was like that, and we signed him, and he turned out okay. Okay, cool. That's like putting your hand in a rattlesnake den, and uh, <laughs> it didn't bite you for the first 100 days, but on the 101st day, it's going to get you. Like, come on. Right. Like, well, why I just, do we just I, keep I, playing with fire? I don't see the benefit. Because to me, J.K. Dobbins well, and Clyde. it's cheap, Steve. That's what everybody says, too. It's cheap. J.K. Dobbins and Clyde are the same person. Yeah. Like, I feel like, literally, like, if if they have uniforms on, it looks like the same person over there. Um, I, I don't see the point of the J.K. Dobbins thing. Well, I thing. think their role they would be the same with the Chiefs. And so, they, with everything. Do you think they, Dobbins is out now? Because a lot of people are saying, well, Dobbins can still get signed here. I think that the one year Clyde cancels out the one year Dobbins deal. The only it? reason I think it, the only reason I think it does is because, like I said, they're the same damn person. They're the same player. I don't know. <laughs> like to me, I don't see a difference. Um, but yeah, I guess they still could for depth purposes. It, it depends on what they're doing with McKinnon. Obviously, they got Clyde back, and w- we talked about that, Mike. We had Clyde and Jarrett McKinnon as the top two likely to sign with the Chiefs in the offseason and free agency. Uh, because we knew they would stick with something that was familiar. Uh, McKinnon, we still haven't heard anything. Clyde signed back. All these other guys are long gone except for Zeke, and uh, there's rumors of him going back. Isn't to it like this every year, though? Because everybody, everybody wants to go to that free agency market and just start loading up on a bunch of, like, randoms. Mm-hmm. And we're always like, Brent Veach is like, he's the guy that just, it's the same people over and over. If he wins with you, that's who they're going to prioritize. I guarantee you right now. They're looking to re-sign Mike Dana within a few days. Uh, I was talking to Cole about this today on Twitter, and there was a thing about PFF, what's the biggest thing? And Cole, I think he tweeted out something about interior offensive line, and I put out that I still think we need an edge. And mm-hmm. so that got us talking about Dana, and I was like, look, Dana getting $15 million on the open market was his spot rack was ridiculous. So I was like, Brett Veach offers a third. Would it be would it surprise you if he signs Dana back to a one year deal for like four and a half, five and a half million dollars here over the nah, next nah. week? And, and I I'm think fine it, with it. I think most people are fine with it. Dana's not like somebody that everybody's gonna be like, dang, we but got he's Dana not back. elite. Like, he's good though. Yeah, he's not elite, but it does give you one more year to let Felix find out what we gotta do there. Because if Felix doesn't pan out, then you're you we're hurting on the defensive. Like there's nobody but George. Like you gotta have in this day and age. You got to have two good edge rushers that can get after the QB, right? Well, that's that takes you back to the draft content we always do, and talk, people talking about Darius Robinson, some people like that. The Chiefs definitely could go edge early again. Uh, I don't, I don't think Chiefs Kingdom would prefer that after taking Felix last season, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Chiefs do anything at this point. Steve, it's you know pretty what the wide biggest, open. You know what the biggest thing that is? If we talk about draft, you know what the biggest a question that I just think the Chiefs have to answer. Like, until we get this answer, and I don't know if we're going to get it, but this determines the entire makeup of the draft and the entire makeup of the offseason going forward. And there's one question you have to answer. Are the Chiefs 100% convinced that Wanya Morris is ready this year and is he the left tackle of the future? That's, That's huge. It. That's because huge. if you say no... Left tackle has to be the number one priority. And if you say, yes, we're completely fine with it. Well, now you can look at your wide receiver. You can look at your defensive end. But if, but if Wanye is not their guy going forward, a hundred percent, if you're not in his camp, then that is where the pendulum lies. And I don't know why I can't get this through to people, but that's the one question you got to ask yourself. That's going to determine the whole shape of the draft. And it's going to determine our entire like plan going forward. Yeah, for sure. Dez the Gym, a YouTube member. He's back, baby. Dez. He's back. What up, Dez? Uh, you know, but that's exactly it, Mike. We've talked about the draft stuff over and over again, and I've said that every time we talk about taking a tackle, it's like, what do the Chiefs think about Wanye? How do they feel about Wanye? Do they have faith that he can do this? Are they going to use him? Are they going to try it? What are they going to do? Uh, there's 
that's really what it boils down to because you know they're not going to use anyone else on the roster over there on the left side. So it's, it's all about Wanya at this point. If they do decide to go in the draft and, and go at left tackle hard, obviously we've talked a million times about how if you don't get the top 10 picks, probably you're not getting a good tackle. Uh, you're going to get a serviceable one. You're not going to get one that you can plug in and play at the left side anyway. We've talked about, guys, hell, we introduced the world to Kingsley Su- Suamatea, apparently. Um, <laughs> and then uh, so we talked about him. He's a versatile kid. Uh could be gr- really good, but but there's a lot of questions there too. Is he more of a right side guy? Could he, you know? But he played both in college. Uh, there's Jordan Morgan out there. There's Patrick Paul. A lot of these different guys, but none of those guys are top tier. None of those guys are plugging and playing. Man, they're not going in and starting at left tackle. If you're right. doing that, you got to go very very top of the draft. I don't see the Chiefs trading up that high either. So, right, like we're seeing a lot of stuff. A lot of these people are in our comments. Maca. Uh, uh, Dustin, John, they think that Wanya is ready, but then you still have, you know, Lone Wolf. Morris isn't ready. Again, I think Chiefs Kingdom's on the fence well, here. What the training staff think? We only seen three weeks of Wanya, right? Think, Was I it think three that, starts? Yeah. Here's the thing. I thought Wanya did fairly well in those three two or three weeks, oh, right? Yes, I agree. I don't think um, he was any much no of a drop step off. Down. That, see, that's that's the thing. It's the perspective you're looking at it from. Do I feel comfortable with Wanye? Do I think Wanye is just ready to be the starting left tackle? I don't. I have all kinds of doubts. We drafted him in the third round as a right tackle. And now we're yeah. just saying that he's going to all of a sudden be our starting left tackle in his in year two. So, yeah, I have all kinds of questions. But if I look at it from the other perspective, like, is he a drop off from Donovan Smith? Not really. Yeah, so, I mean, barely, right? Right. So, I mean, it could go either way. It just really depends on what the Chiefs think. And obviously, whatever Andy decides to do ultimately is the, the best decision. He sees it. He knows it. He's Andy Reid. Right. Uh, Brian Parrott says, if we get a shot at what Mike calls a tier two run, a wide receiver at 32, we should pull the trigger because we're getting a tier two guy tackle as well. Come out with Paul and Leggett or Lad, and we are in business. Hey. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Can I, this is exactly what we talked about, Mike. Uh, Brian, me and Mike's had this conversation. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's just funny because it, it's perfectly like plays into it. But we were talking about how the first two rounds of the Chiefs go. If they're going tackle or receiver, it could go a lot of different ways because depending on how the board falls, they could take this one first, get the other one later. They could take this one first, get the other one later. Like which combo is the best? What's what what yeah. what works out best? Do you get the best player? like or whatever or do you get like the best first two picks that you can possibly get you know so uh, yeah uh the, the, well the draft a lot of people don't think about it that way but the draft nfl teams look at drafts as one and two rounds the same so it's not the same value but they say look if we draft somebody in round one who does that leave us in round two well especially at pick 32 right. mike is that a better combo they're so, all second round picks at that right point. so let's throw out an example steve at 32 We'll say Brian Thomas Jr. falls. Do you take Brian Thomas Jr. or do you take, you know, um, Jordan Morgan, who maybe is like the eighth, ninth, tenth tackle on the board? And Absolutely then, take Brian Thomas Jr. Right. right? I think you, that's where you take the wide because receiver. Because then you can then you can look into a second round of Su- Suamatea or uh, Patrick Paul or somebody like that that might fall a little bit. You come up and get them. Yeah, come up and get them or just sit there yeah. and take whoever or just say, look, tackle's out. But it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I would rather have Lad and whoever I get in round two. Or do you say, oh, I'd rather reach on Patrick Paul just a little bit and then take the receiver because it's deeper in round two. Because we can get, yeah. So yeah. so it's it's a it's a weird game. But I'm on this. Here's what I think. I think the more and more we get to the draft and we don't get a veteran left tackle, I, I believe the closer we get to the draft and there's not a veteran left tackle get signed, I think that means Wanye's winning the job. And I believe that means the Chiefs get out of the tackle shot. Like, I don't think they do it. The only way they do it is if one of their guys were to fall to 15 to 20 and they drive up the board. But if they sit at 32 and they haven't signed a free agent, I think Wanye is who they're looking to, to, to bank it on this year. Because you're not getting a guy, maybe not even at 32. We've talked about Patrick Paul. We've talked about Kingsley Suamatayu. I don't think they're ready to come in and beat <laughs> – I don't think they beat Wanye off the off the rip. Yeah, no, they don't. I don't think they do. Uh, but then again, I have my questions about Wanye. I'm not completely sold on that yet, but we did see that he can play the position. Uh, Tubon from TGZ, 
Uh, I clicked the wrong thing. There we go. What happened? <laughs> You clicked it too, didn't you? Uh, uh, he says, still think left tackle should be a priority for depth. Um, absolutely. I think offensive line is just going to be a, a focal point for the draft. Uh, they might just draft a left tackle. Then again, they might end up drafting a tackle inside offensive line, and they might draft two of something. Like, we don't really know yet. When Brett Veach, you know, goes on something, he, he goes heavy on it. So uh, we'll see where his mind is at as far as that goes. But they definitely need depth there on the offensive line because there's a lot of contracts coming up next year as well. So, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, just letting you guys know, we actually, we just finished up our top 50 big board that we're going to release to you guys. We're going to put that out probably this week sometime. We may even like reveal it here and then you guys can download the PDF for completely free or whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you start looking through who we've got in the top 50, for example, um, We've got 10 offensive tackles in the top 50. That's how loaded the offensive tackle is. There's 10 in the top 50 players. Once you get out of that top 50, it's very shaky. Mm -hmm. It's very shaky. So, Isn't that how it normally goes? Though? Yes. So by pick 64, if if you don't get, you know, and, and I think tackle is going to be coveted. If you need a tackle, everybody knows you got to get up and get them in round one, round two. So we'll either have to go up and get them. Or we'll have to do what we got to do. But if you set at 64 and you didn't take one in, 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 in round one, you're not getting a great, like you're going to get a guy that you're going to have to develop for a few years and he may be good. It's not going to be somebody that's going to come in and compete with Wanye right off the rip unless it's just luck. You know what I mean? Unless it's, unless it's Puka Nakua luck, which again, if Puka Nakua is in any other situation, maybe not drafted to the Rams, I think that was just like lightning struck perfectly for him, right? Yeah, great offense for him. Like if be. he goes to the Chiefs, Andy might pull his old trick and and bury him behind the depth chart on you know behind Kadarius Tony and everybody, and then we don't even see what he looks like after a year. So, right, it, I think a lot of it is where you're drafted and what scheme you're in for sure. But yeah, I do think um, if the Chiefs want a good quality tackle, they're going to have to get up in round one. You're going to have to be aggressive with it because I think a lot of people are going to be aggressive. So, so uh, we'll see. Uh, What's the chances of the Chiefs going out and drafting something in the first and second round that's not wide receiver and offensive tackle? Pretty good. If you can't move out of 32 and your guys off the board, look, there's only I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with everybody. When you go through this and you hear all these names, I put it out on Twitter yesterday. There has been 17 different wide receivers since the beginning of this process be mocked in the first round. There are not 17 first round wide receivers, guys. There's only about 15 to 20 actual players in this draft that are worth a round one pick. Really? After pick 21 to 32. <laughs> That's every position, correct? Yeah. These are second round guys that you're just trying to take a shot on at that point. Like there's really only about 15 to 20 guys in this draft that you could call legit first round talent. <clears throat> yeah, I agree, man. It's going to be uh, interesting. A lot of people... They, they, they do too many mock drafts on the PFF simulator and they get a little confused sometimes, but Des the gym with the five bomb says, what would you think about giving up a one next year to move up 13 to 15 to get a left tackle in the future? Could cost more. I don't know. Well, that's the problem Des. appreciate the five, by the way, the yep, problem is it, brother. a lot of teams don't want to deal with the chiefs. Uh, they're going to make it hard on the chiefs. Uh, so, so moving up and down in the draft could be a little tricky for Brett beach this, this year. Um, on top of that, Mike, do you think there's a future left tackle even available at 15? You would have okay, look, so it depends on who you would who you would consider. Um is it really a future Joe I guess, Alt's off the board, right? Yeah, yeah. Who's on that list for you? Joe Alt's off the board. Right, but um, counting all of them, counting all of them, who do you see in this draft that could start at left tackle and be the future left tackle? At a 15. Oh, in this. Okay. So if you just take draft. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Alt, I think could do it. I think, um, Troy Fatanu is a guy that's got the best footwork. And once he measured over 34 inch arms, I think he can now play left tackle. And otherwise Fatanu is my favorite because he can play every single position and he would be a pro bowler at every position. Fatanu is my favorite lineman in this draft. And that includes Joe Alt. Um, he could do it, but would the chiefs be sold? that you could come in and play left tackle early, but he is a piece that, like I said, he can go anywhere. So that's line depth up the board, up the wazoo. Right. Um, Fuwanga from Oregon State 
is going to be a tackle in this league. Um, is he going to be a left tackle? That's debatable. He's got tiny arms. He's got 33 and an eighth inch arms. He's right on the cusp. And a lot of people think he may have to kick down into guard. So he's debatable. Oli Fashanu, people think can be a left tackle, but look, he played at Penn State for four years, three years, whatever it was. He never got stronger. He he never got, he's got bad upper body strength. So I don't know how he does it. Tyler Guyton and Mims are projects. Roger, Roger Rosengarten is a right tackle. Kingsley is a project. Jordan Morgan may have to kick in the guard because he's got the shortest arms out of everybody. Jordan Morgan's arms are only 32 inches. He is not a left tackle. I don't care what anybody tells me. Jordan Morgan is a guard, and he's not good. Like, he's not good at left tackle. He's just not. He's coming off an ACL injury. I've watched film. I've watched film. I've watched film. He's still my number 10 tackle prospect. He's barely above Patrick Paul, and to be honest, I don't think he is above Patrick Paul. In my opinion, I'd rather take Patrick Paul's upside. So to put that in perspective, Steve, there's four guys that could be the tackle of the future. Alt, Fatano, Fuanga, and Latham. I don't think Fashano can do it. I don't. He may be serviceable on the right side. I don't think he can play left very well. And then if you get lucky and hit on Geithner Mims, those are like your project guys at the end right. of the first. So to be honest, if you want Fatanu, Alt, Fu, you're not getting Alt unless you get into the top eight. You're not getting Fatanu unless you – Fatanu could be the guy that f- slides. Him and Fuanga could slide a little bit because they don't know if they're going to play guard or tackle. And which so one of those is guys. the one that you love so much? Uh, Troy. Fatano. Fatano. I think he actually pronounces his name Fontano. Fontano. It, it, they've got these weird, you know, the Fuangas. Fanta. And Fon- don't you yeah. want to? So want anyways, the he's Fanta? the one I love. I don't think he gets past Seattle. And they're picking like 16-ish, 15. You right. got to get up to that. And what what would that cost you to get up that high? Too much uh, if you're the Chiefs. I appreciate the five bomb, Dez. Y'all put some legendaries in the chat for Odez being back in the house with the membership and the five bomb. Um, Scotty Flamingo, what a name. He says, why does Veach keep bringing back dead weight? CEH brings absolutely nothing of value to this team. I wouldn't say well, he I beg no to value. differ, Flamingo. <laughs> um, so a lot of people down, down on CEH, obviously. At the beginning of last year, everybody hated CEH. They wanted to burn him at the stake. Uh, by the end of the year, everybody's like, oh, well, we kind of like Clyde now. Like, it was weird. Uh, Chiefs Kingdom is a fickle thing. Um, but Clyde, like, here's the thing, man. It's not exactly dead weight. I think Clyde contributed pretty well last year when he was asked to. I think he's going to be asked to do the same types of things this coming season. And for the price that he's getting and you know what you got, that's not a bad signing. Like, we, all, we speculated that that's probably what was going to happen to some degree. Yeah, I don't think Clyde. Like, who, who else are you going to get at the price we're getting Clyde for a year that, that you're comfortable with? Like, there isn't really any. What do you think the Clyde number is going to be? I don't think it's any. I don't. I think it's, it's going to be like minimal. minimum. 1.25, 1.5, somewhere in that um, region. The thing about it is I think the Chiefs will actually look at some, some running back depth in this draft. I think there's a couple of guys. Uh, first of all, all the running backs are going to fall further than they should talent wise, because they're just not valued anymore. I don't think anybody, you might see somebody take a stab at a running back in the second round, but I mean, Dallas, I, don't even know, I don't even know if they will. Uh, so I think all of them are going to fall quite a bit. And I think there's some intriguing picks in this draft as far as running backs go. I mean, you got guys out there that no one even really talks about that much, Mike. Um, you got uh, Ray Davis from Kentucky. You got uh, Schrader from Missouri. You got all kinds of these little pieces that, that could be good and valuable, but nobody's even talking about them because it's just not a thing. Uh, if you were to be able to snag a Jalen Wright, you're killing it because if you can get him in the third round, that's ridiculous. Um, yeah. I think so if I the think, Chiefs take a shot at running back, do you think they do it at one of the, 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 the two fifths or do you think they just go ahead and wait till UDFA? I don't know. It just depends on if they see anybody they really have their eye on. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, I, it, it depends. I think that they should, by all means, I think try Clyde, to draft one. I think There's the a Clyde lot of guys signing, there. I think the Clyde signing kind of makes it to where they just kind of – you don't have to now spend anything in the draft if you don't want to. Yeah. Right? I think that's what they did. They're just like, well, now, look, we don't have to pick running back unless there's but, just a great one. Well, I think they. What are, what are you? What are they going to do? They'll have four on the roster, right? Right well, you now, got you're Prince looking, and P. Ryan still, right? 
Is that and, what and you're look, why is everybody so easy to give up on them? Everybody was crying for P. Ryan all off season. He should have made the team, according to ninety percent of the people. Right, but in, real, in the quit. real world, in the real world, Mike. Right. Uh, P. Ryan's P. Ryan, and then you got Prince. Who uh, Prince? I think could still develop. Yeah, you, he's same. he's a developmental project. Right. Uh, obviously, didn't develop as fast as everybody thought that he was going to. But if you draft a running back right. or you go UDFA on him, more than likely that's another developmental project. <laughs> Yep. Another two bomb from Dez. Appreciate you, buddy. He says, Willie gone with linebackers. Do you like the draft? Who oh, do you yeah. like in the draft? Um, man, so I think we're still solid at linebacker right now. That we'll definitely probably look at something, maybe. Um, but we're still pretty solid at linebacker. I like our linebacking core. Yep, Even without I Willie. I think um, if uh, the Chiefs look to draft one, they'll stay maybe one of the two fifths or something. I really like uh Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. Six one two thirty seven. Yeah. He run a four five. <laughs> Are we homers for Kentucky guys? One six um, two split. They just get overlooked a little bit. And to me, yeah. I think he's pretty close to Willie Gay. Like he's also, got a Willie uh, Gay profile. Also like McGee from Temple. Jordan McGee. He yep. he reminds me of Willie Gay. Those well. are the two guys that kind of remind me of the Willie Gay athleticism. Uh, if you was to take one a little bit early, which a lot of people are super high on Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson, he plays that weak side linebacker. To me, I'm not as high on him. I think he's like third, fourth round tops. Yeah. And uh, he just don't. He didn't have any numbers or anything running at at the combine, so I, I don't think he's done enough to impress me to this point. But those are the yep. like three guys that kind of do the Willie Gay thing, in my opinion. Yep, appreciate the two, uh, Des, and we got a five bomb from JCP, aka Let the Boy Watch. Uh, he says we got Let Lewis too that will play fullback and PP on the PP too. Uh, yeah, we forgot about Zamet. Um, it's funny Zamet. though. Chiefs Kingdom, like I said, they're very fickle because, you know, a week ago they were telling us how this rugby guy that's never played football a day in his life was going to take over uh, Isaiah Pacheco's job and be the rookie of the year running back in the NFL. And then less than a week later, it's like, we have to get J.K. Dobbins. We need J.K. Dobbins. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. What? You just destroyed us. You guys are crazy. Because we um, said, hold your horses on a rugby player. Yeah, but thanks for bringing that up, JCP. I forgot about oh, oh Zamet. Zamet, Bobby. Yeah, Zamet. Look, I'm telling you right now, Zamet probably is not going to make this team, and I'll tell you why. Because he's a free practice squad. He's a free yeah, practice squad number. Yeah. If you put him on the team, you don't have your free practice squad. If he don't make the team, he goes to the practice squad for free. Nobody can poach him. I'm pretty sure like he's exempt from that. Even if he's not, I don't know who would want to poach him. So my point is, is like, you get a free practice squad guy that if you have to use, you can just pull him up and down off the squad like they did Pinnell like 15 times. Like, yeah. I think you got like a four or five time max, but True. he's going to be a practice squad guy because it's just a free position. Appreciate the five, JCP. Y'all put some legendaries in the chat for him. Mike, I have to dip out of here. I got to go to work. So, uh, so I don't know if you're sticking around for a while or whatever. But uh, appreciate you guys being here. Hit the like button for us. We haven't even asked you to do that today. Go hit that like button. Takes two seconds. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you're watching on X or Facebook, share it. Share it. Get it out to more people. Uh, let people know we're getting some good Chiefs content. Uh, and I appreciate you guys hanging out Uh with us today early today and uh, appreciate the donos and everything so uh mike it's all you my man uh i'll see okay. you guys later see you steve be careful man yeah i'll sit around i'll take a few more questions from you guys if you guys want to talk some draft or something um we haven't been on in a few days so i don't care to sit here and talk with you guys for just a little bit uh let me know what you got hit that like button let's go let's let's get it going uh let me see yeah, what do you guys think about the Wentz signing? Look, I am decently pleased with the Carson Wentz signing. I think he's by far the best backup that Mahomes has ever had here in KC now. Um, you got to think about it. If Mahomes were to be injured, God forbid, for a few games or whatever, I think Carson Wentz gives you enough veteran presence and he gives you enough mobility. And is there going to be a drop-off? Yeah. But I don't think you now think like – worse it's not like doom and gloom there i think now you're more of like well if our defense can go and he can just serviceably not turn the ball over it shouldn't really be much of a problem so i really do not mind carson wentz right there i think under andy reed it's going to be similar to what he did in philly i really believe that with um with Dougie P as his coach, I think he drafted him. Did Doug Peterson draft Wentz? I can't remember. But either way, I do think it'll be a decent signing. I really do. I, I don't think it's bad 
And honestly, Blaine Gabbert wasn't what we kind of thought he could do when he got a shot to start last year. He was, it's a good thing that we didn't, you know, have to rely on him like we did Henny there in the playoff game. So yeah, I, I don't mind it. And and I'm pretty sure we had actually thrown around maybe signing Wentz last year when they were signing Gabbert. And I, I never went back and looked, but I'm pretty sure we had kind of threw that idea out last year. But yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not really um, opposed to it to be honest. Uh, Scotty, when do we start looking for Travis Kelsey's replacement? I don't know. A lot of people's on the fence with Kelsey. Is he going to play one more year, two more years, three more years? What's he going to do? I don't even think Kelsey knows what he wants to do. I think it's just kind of up in the air with him. That we've interviewed a lot. Okay, look, we've talked to Jatavian Sanders. We're bringing in Ben Sennett on a top thirty. We brought in Eric All on a top 30. We spoke with Theo Johnson. We've now talked with four of the top, geez, four of the top five, maybe. The only guy we haven't talked to in my top five is Ben or Brock Bowers, because obviously he's going in the top probably 10. If he does slide, I mean, you're not coming up the board to get him. He's not getting to us. There's just no way. So Brock Bowers, there was no point in talking to him. But Ben Sennett, we've talked to. Jatavion Sanders, we've talked to. Theo Johnson, we've talked to. Eric All, we've talked to. The only ones we haven't talked to that I've got up there is Cade Stover from Ohio State, Tanner McLaughlin out of Arizona, Dallin Hoker, Colorado State. Some of those guys we've just not spoken to. To be honest, I don't think there's anybody in this class that could be a Travis Kelsey replacement one for one. It's just not there. And I know you're going to say, well, who is? But I just don't see anybody with much potential to do it. Theo tested like a just a flat out beast. Like he really did. He ran a four five seven, a one five five split, and a thirty nine and a half inch vertical. That's insane. But to be honest, Ben Sennett's right there with him. It wasn't too much. His forty was about a tenth of a second slower at a four six eight. But otherwise, he was spot on on the ten yard split. It was a one five five to a one five nine, so a point zero four. That's like literally this. Okay. And then his vert was a half inch higher at 40 inches over 39 and a half. So Ben Sennett doing the flex, doing the tight end stuff. He can line up anywhere. Ben Sennett's a nice little intriguing pick. And on day two, you'd have to take him. Look, I still believe he's going to get in the second round. I still believe he's going to get in the second round. A lot of people are saying I'm crazy for thinking that. Dude, I've got my ear to the to the to the info board i've talked to a lot of people and i think the general consensus is that ben Sennett has now overtaken jatavion sanders pretty firmly and that he's probably going to go day two he's going to go in the you know he's going to go in the second round i believe we'll see i don't know i mean things can get thrown in the plane but i don't think there's a kelsey replacement this year so i don't know i really don't know um it's got to be soon because noah gray is on a um contract year this year right so you have to you got to start making plans sooner rather than later in my opinion why, why do people keep saying this like do you, guys you, there's a reality and then there's some kind of alternate reality where people just think you can just go find the best player on the board like literally Marvin Harrison Jr. besides Caleb Williams is everybody's number two player what do you have to do to ensure you get Marvin Harrison Jr.? You would have to trade up to Arizona at number four, maybe New England at number three, depending on if they want to take a quarterback or not. If they're not sold on Drake May or Jaden Daniels, whoever falls to him, they can maybe want to take Marvin Harrison Jr. Why? He's the best athlete, or the well, not the best athlete in my opinion, but he's the best pure polished wide receiver in the draft. It's close with him and neighbors and Abdunze, but I think most people would say Marvin Harrison Jr. is the guy. What would it take to get up to number three, number four in this draft? You'd have to give up every pick you had for three years. That's just insane. Like, we have to stop living in this fantasy land. That's not going to happen. Like, it doesn't get anything done. Um, I think so for Joe Alt, too. I, th I think that's a pipe dream, too. It's, it's not going to happen. I see people saying Joe Alt could possibly slide. I, Joe Alt's not coming out of that top 10. I would almost be willing to bet. I'd bet 100 bucks Joe Alt don't fall out of the top 10, minus him suffering some kind of weird injury between now and the draft or him, like, 
online smoking a bong somewhere like Jeremy Tunsil, it's going to have to take some, an act of God to prevent him from getting out of that top 10. It really will. Like this stuff is not happening. Like to be realistic here, guys, the Chiefs could start wanting to trade up somewhere around the 15 to 21 mark. And at 15, to get between 15 and 20, you're looking at probably you're going to lose your second round pick or you're going to lose next year's first or you're going to lose next year's second round. Like you're going to start losing a big chunk of picks. So you got to ask yourself, if, and again, you're not getting Joe Alt to 15. You're not getting Marvin Harrison Jr. to 15. It's not happening. It's just not going to happen. So who would be there around 15? Troy Fatanu may be there. Fatanu, however he pronounces it. I've got to go look at a pronunciation for him. He could possibly be there because of the guard tackle conundrum. Fuwanga may or may not be there. J.C. Latham may or may not be there. Oli Fashanu may or may not be there. So it's one of those four. And to be honest, I think at left tackle, to me, Fontenu is the guy you would want, but the Chiefs have talked to Fuanga. So maybe they like him more. So if Fuanga was the fall to say 16, are we happy giving up our entire draft this year or our entire draft next year to take a 6'6", 324-pound tackle that only has 33 inch arms. He ran one of the slowest 40 yard dashes at the combine. He was about mid pack. So he doesn't show overwhelming athleticism. And again, people say 40 yard dash. Why are you looking at that? 40 yard dash translates to better linemen than wide receivers. I don't know why that is, but it's just the way it is. The better 40 times for a, for an offensive tackle, they always produce the best. And out of this one, the best 40 time, believe it or not, was Roger Rosengarten out of Washington. And that is why I think he's a lock second round pick. And people could be talking about Rosengarten maybe at the end of the first. I don't, I'm not saying he's going to go, but I think he starts coming up in the draft boards at the end of the first. He's very, very um, athletic. He's very athletic. So again, do you give up all your picks for Fawanga? I don't know if we're comfortable with that. I don't know. The Chiefs could be. I don't know. But again, that comes down to the same thing we've been talking about. Is he really that much of an upgrade this year over Wanye? I don't know. Do the Chiefs just want to go with Wanye? I don't know. If they want to go with Wanye, you're not going to trade up into the top 15 and give up your draft. So that's what I'm saying. I think we got to learn. We have to get more clarity on the Wanye situation. Is he the future or is he not? I think that's the only way we're going to really know. And to be honest, I don't think they're going to come out and tell us that because that kind of maybe gives up your draft plans. So we'd have to see. Um, yeah, Lone Wolf says, heck no. Yeah, I don't think you could either. Now, if you could get away with maybe getting up to 15 to 18, let's just say 20. If we can get up to 20, somewhere around where the Steelers pick, if you could come up there and give up maybe – a third round pick and then maybe a third round next year. I would consider two thirds to come up. Maybe 10 picks. Will that get it done? I don't know. I don't know if that's enough, but I would be fine with losing two third rounders to come up and get a Fuanga or a Fatanu, but I don't think I could give up my second round pick this year. And I definitely don't think I could give up my first. So we'll see. We'll see, man. Uh, Carr says if alt dropped a little, we still couldn't get him. Probably not. It's just, he's not going to fall that far down the board. I just don't, it, it's almost impossible for a team like us at 32 to be able to get into the top 10. Look, Minnesota's picking 11 and they are rumored to want to come up to take McCarthy or Drake may. They just had to go get another first round pick. So now they loaded up with like pick 22 or 23. You're going to have to give up both those picks to get into the top 10. So that's two first rounders this year. And they're picking literally at 11. We're picking 32. How many picks are we going to have to give? Like, we're going to have to give up four first-round picks. It's insane, man. Uh, Black Kraken with the five bomb. I love the name Black Kraken. What's up, guys? I'm late to the party, and you may have already covered this, but if A.D. Mitchell falls to, let's say, 25, will we move up to get him? Look, A.D. Mitchell is literally, I don't know what the deal is, but A.D. Mitchell did not get a post-combine jump. He didn't do it. He was considered second tier, and a lot of guys probably had him ranked um, fifth, 
I'm going to say they had them about five. I, I'm going to th- say they had Harrison, Neighbors, Odunze, and whatever, uh, Brian Thomas Jr. And I'm going to say A.D. Mitchell was like five on most boards. Um, Worthy, when he ran a 4-2-1, he's kind of now got up to maybe that fifth, you know, because speed, speed kills. And uh, Lad McConkey's always been a, like a nice, smooth route runner, but I think Lad McConkey is going to settle himself into the back end of the first round, and probably more than likely, if the Chiefs don't take a shot on him, he probably goes into round two. Um, so we'll see. But AD did not get a boost, and at six two two oh five, he ran a four three four with a one five two ten yard split and a thirty nine and a half inch vertical. If you put that into all my metrics, those are elite categories. Then when you look at it. He's got a 36% contested catch rate, which is in the great category. And he only had a 1.8% drop rate, which is one of the best. His 1.8% drop rate, if you compare that to Troy Franklin, who everybody likes for some reason, Troy Franklin has a 10% drop rate. 10%. And and AD only has a 1.8, so we'll just say 2. 8% better there for AD Mitchell. But AD did not get a kick up in the draft like we thought he would. And I think what happened is when you go back and watch film of AD, there are so many times when he is not running and going to get the ball, he will half ass everything on plays. He doesn't play as hard as he needs to on every down. He doesn't take run blocking as seriously as he needs to. And I think that's been his 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 little downfall. So I do believe AD Mitchell is going to drop unless the whole Buffalo thing now trading Stephon Diggs, unless that causes some kind of weird shift in it. I do think he is like 25 and down on most draft boards. And to be honest, again, we just got our draft board done and I had him at like 19. And then when I went back and re-rated this for my release, he has now dropped into the lower 20s. I won't say the exact number because I want to release this for you guys to look at later, but he's now fallen into the late 20s. So he's right there where I'm saying there's just something about him that's just not like, it's not tickling the the teats. It's not tickling the teats for us. And he's not going up the board. Now I do say that A.D. Mitchell has got a dog alpha mentality. And if he could just flip the switch, he could be a George Pickens. He could be that number one, give me the ball kind of guy. He could be the C.D. Lamb. He could be like a T.O. He could be that kind of guy. But he's got to want it, and he's got to get over the mental issues. He's got to get over the effort issues, and he's got to come in and prove it. And I think teams want to see that And until he shows it, which he's not showed it to this point. So I think a lot of teams just aren't comfortable spending that top 20 pick on him. And so you have to be very, very uh, sure of something in the top 20. So I appreciate the question, Black Kraken. I really do. And I would love A.D. Mitchell if he falls. Would we move up to get him? I don't think we would move up to get him. If he comes to 32, I think he's being considered at that point. But again, he's about the same size as Rasheed Rice. Uh, His game's a little different than Rasheed Rice. But it looks like there may be some, like, character stuff are are the chiefs ever going to fall away from that character issue like it's starting to bite them over and over and over again and at some point you're like they may just have to to just give up that pipe dream of like you know we're the we're the guys that bring on the second chances and bring in the troubled and we'll turn them around and at some point it just starts looking kind of bad for the franchise and then you start looking and, and i'll just get off on a little tangent here black kraken i appreciate the five bomb you got to start looking at all this. I was having this like epiphany last night and the chiefs are already in the spotlight 24 seven because we we're winning. What's that calls? The haters have come out of the woodwork. We're the new Patriots. Everybody loves to hate us. So we're constantly in the spotlight. Our guys are now hitting success at earlier and earlier points in their career. So you may get more of the Rasheed Rice's to all these incidents may start coming out possibly. Like you never know, but but it's a possible thing because we do take shots on some of these guys with a little bit of character issues here and there, and it's like we try to turn it around, but don't always like get you, right? So I'm just afraid the more we stay in the spotlight negatively, and then now the taxpayers have voted no, and I don't think the Chiefs are leaving Jackson County. I don't. At least till 2030, I don't, but I do know Kansas has an aggressive 
an aggressive lady in charge over there. I think it's their governor. And she is very aggressive. They've introduced sports gambling. They've, they put 80% of it to attracting teams to the area. It's very possible they could get them to come over. And so think about this. Within the next five, six, seven years, you've got all this outcry, all this hate to the Chiefs 24-7. They could start being pressured them into maybe changing our name. Dude, it's, it's not beyond it. It wouldn't surprise me the way the world's going. I wouldn't, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of negative going at the Chiefs right now. It's like something's attacking us. It's attacking us. And I feel like we're on this cusp of like, can we finish this dynasty? Can we continue to be awesome? And can we continue to get better? It's, it's almost like we're at a teeter totter point here. And like, I feel like a lot of stuff's happening right now. That's kind of like, you know, it's kind of rocking the, uh, the, the the wire we're walking right now you know so i'm hoping that all this doesn't like spark this weird like just crazy timeline glitch where the chiefs just implode uh, change their name and move to another state like that would suck and i'm not trying to play that game but i'm just saying like it just feels like so weird this past like two weeks has just felt so weird with chiefs football it's just not felt right so i'm hoping hoping this is just a little blip on the radar and we come out the other side. But with all the haters, all the negative attention we're getting, with the way the world's going, it wouldn't be surprising to me if they just don't be like, look, this is a perfect opportunity for us to take off all the heat, you know, play the play the game that the Indians had to play and the Redskins had to play and all these franchises play the game so you don't get canceled. And, and dude, it's just, it, to me, it feels scary. I don't know. It just feels scary. Uh, what's up, KB? Texans fan here just observing. Dude, the Texans got them. They have had an off season. I think you guys are playing the game right, man, with C.J. Stroud. You, you hit on C.J. Stroud. And, and what's funny is we kind of pulled out a thing last year, and we, we had a little joke with C.J. Stroud when he didn't name Mahomes as his top QB, which he was just – I don't think he was even naming his top QB. But we were just like, yeah, well – he's going to be a bust. And then everybody like laughed. They're like, Oh, good call. And I'm like, well, uh, we didn't really mean that he was our top rated wide, our, our top rated quarterback. But yeah, they've got him on that four year, five year contract, cheap contract, man. And then all these moves, the Texans are going to have to be taken serious, man. And I really think I, I said two weeks ago, I think the chiefs and the Texans might be opening night football. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know if they'll let us open on Thursday again, two years in a row. I don't know how they'll do that, but yeah, man, I don't know. We'll see, but I think the Texans are legit. I really do. If if CJ don't have a, a sophomore slump, sometimes that happens a little bit, right? Like you start getting a guy on film more, you get a year to adjust. So now it's on CJ. Like, can he get over it? Can he mentally get through this next phase? So I think he'll be fine. But yeah, man, they're swinging for it. Yeah, Dustin says it. They're swinging for the fences. It's a two-year window. They are swinging, man. They're going after it. I kind of wondered why they were doing it, though, in a way. I mean, I guess you've got the the young quarterback contract, which frees up a lot of money because when CJ has to restructure, it's going to take a bunch of it, man. But we'll see. We'll see. I I think they're going to be serviceable. They got, like, good pieces, man. They got good pieces. Scott, Scott with a five bomb, he says, if Chiefs cave to name change, I will cancel them 100%. And I've been a fan. I've been a fan since 1990. Dude, I tell you, I've grew up watching the Chiefs and everything. Like, it, it's it's life. It really is for my entire family. Like, this is 24-7, 365. Like, everything is Chiefs, man. And, dude, if they change the name, I'm dead serious. Like, I just, it's not going to hit the same. I'm not going to love it. I think me and Steve actually joked around one time. We were coming up with alternate names if they were to do it. And the only one we liked was what's on my hat right here. We come up with the idea that you could still call it the Kansas city kingdom. I think is what we said. Kansas city kingdom, which is kind of a weird name for a mascot, but the kingdom. So you just refer to as the kingdom. You could still use the logo. You could still use everything, uh, but I'm sure they would attack that too. So who knows? But yeah, I'm just not, yeah, and it's kind of a play off the Kings as well, Skyler, for real. So I wouldn't be like, I just don't want to talk about it, man. I just don't like it. 
I think all the name changing and stuff is just a little ridiculous. Like, I, I do. I don't think there was nothing wrong with the Cleveland Indians name. The Redskins, I've heard that they're suing, trying to get their name back. Like, we just everybody's just got to chill a little bit, bro. Just got to chill. Like, wake up. Just chill. Just chill. Just chill. Hit the peace pipe some. Chill out, bro. Jeez Louise. Yeah, if the Chiefs go to, to Kansas... Look, I don't know if they will or not. Like, I'm not, I don't live in Jackson County. I don't live in Missouri. Um, we we kind of, we've considered, you know, possibly like a move or something. And everybody tells us, they're like, do not move to Jackson County. It stinks. Um, it can't be, well, I don't want to say it can't be worse, but yeah, where we live, it's pretty bad too. Our roadways are crap. Our taxes are crazy. It's, but that's just the world these days, it seems. So, who knows? I just didn't, to me, I, from an outside perspective, and it could have been wrong, I think that the Royals being part of the Chiefs' plan kind of alienated some people because the Royals just will not put out a good product, which, again, is just a product of MLB. You don't have a salary cap, and it's hard for small market teams to win, which is why we say that's the only reason the Chiefs can do well is because of a salary cap and the way Brett Veach and them can maneuver it. It it now makes everybody play by the same rules. You just can't pay, you know, your quarterback $500 million, then go out and pay the best receiver $300 million, and then on and on and on and just buy teams. So it makes it more fair. But, yeah, the Royals are going to be tough to ever compete. Uh, lightning in a bottle the year they had Moose and, and you know, Salvi and, and Hosmer. And, dude, like, it was such a good team. It was, but – I don't know if that'll happen again. That To me, it felt like those were all guys that just kind of like grew and became something. And then you seen what happened. Hosmer took some big money. They all started taking some big money. Kane goes to, you know, Milwaukee. It's, baseball does baseball. You can't keep nothing together, man. They just all take the money. So I don't want to see that. But yeah, I think the baseball thing got in the way a little bit. I think people wanted to fight the billionaires. And I get the sen I get the sentiment. But, man, everybody's taxed about everything. Nobody nobody complains about all the other – I mean, they do, but they just they just keep voting for it, so it doesn't matter. So, like, the one thing that everybody could come together on and agree to was a vote to get rid of a three-eighth cent tax that everybody was already paying. You just extended it a little bit. How much could that possibly be per person at the end of the year? Like, what are you paying, like 12 bucks a year tops? And I get it. There wasn't a lot of good renovation either. There's a lot of stuff for like the VIPs and stuff. I think Clark and them's got to do better at that too. Like people, normal people look, ticket prices have already got sky high. You can't just make all the amenities around the stadium just for the people that's got the most money. Like we're not playing class warfare here. So they've got to do better. They've got to come up with better stuff. I get all the votes for no, and I get all the votes for yeses. I think there was some scare tactics involved. Hopefully, they can just come back with a better plan and get it done. But, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Kansas don't make a big run at it, man. They're pretty aggressive. But that's all I'll say. I don't really – I don't know the ins and outs of it. I really don't. I mean, who knows? Uh, Ray Ray, what's up, man? Uh, who would you rather see with the Chiefs, Boyd or Dobbins? I would rather see neither one. I don't think either one's necessary. Dobbins would be cheaper. I'll say Dobbins just because he'll be signed for so low of an amount. He'll probably could get cut in camp and it won't bother us. That's what I would say. Um, Ray Ray, by the way, Ray Ray, you did, was it Ray Ray that won? Ray, you won a jersey, correct? <laughs> you won a Rasheed Rice jersey, Ray Ray. I know you did. It's been a while, believe me, because Fanatics has been a pain in my butt is what they've been over that jersey. But uh, look what I have in hand, Ray Ray. I got your jersey, big dog. It's going to be in the mail here probably in a day or two, my boy. So I appreciate the patience. And I'm going to throw in something extra for you waiting because you've not cried about it. You've not complained about it. And uh, you've just trusted the process that I had no control over. So I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, Carr says the renovation plan was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I, 
Maca, the proposed redesign was appalling. Yeah, I just think there's a there was a lot of problems with it. I just don't think the plans was well put together. I think the Royals kind of botched it. I'm not opposed to a downtown stadium. I don't know why anybody would really be. It would kind of just, maybe it makes the area better. To be honest, I heard Kansas City was kind of going downhill with like crime rates and stuff. I know that draws more people into the area, but maybe that draws in bigger, better businesses. And now you get a better presence involved. So, uh, yeah, maybe that happens. Uh, Enrique, one gifted. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Um, I hope all is well. One gifted membership, man. I'm going to take one more. One more that I got to get out of here. I appreciate you guys for sticking out with me here. Uh, well, nobody's really asking nothing, so we'll just call it a day. I appreciate you guys. Again, uh, this week, Saturday, we're going to have Daniel Harms on the show. Saturday night, Daniel Harms is going to come on and talk some draft with us. Um, next Wednesday, Bro Schmo. If you guys watch him and his draft content, he's going to be talking with us next Wednesday on a live. A little Bro Schmo actually going to talk draft there. We're also going to come out with our top 50. Everybody, this is going to be free. We're going to release it. You can download the PDF, look through it, uh, and it's going to have the top 50 players on it. You guys can look look through that, keep it on draft day, whatever you want to see. Uh, but yeah, man, appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, stick it with me in the middle of the day. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button for me. Uh, yeah, man. Just appreciate you guys. And um, as always, go Chiefs. You guys have a good one. I, 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 I,